Hello everyone and welcome back to the D-Hard House. My name is Alicia. I'm the host of this crafty podcast. And this is my year in review episode. So every year in January, what I like to do is review all the things that I've made over the previous calendar year. <laughs> so if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm so happy you're here. So this is not like one of my regular episodes. I'm not going to talk about anything that I'm working on right now. Just the things that I finished finished in the calendar year of 2019. So let's get into it. Uh, before I go into my year in review, I have a giveaway and I like to do this up at the top of the episode. So last, um, last time in episode 70 back in December, which seems like so long ago now, uh, we hit 200 subscribers on this YouTube channel. So thank you so much to everyone who subscribed to the podcast. Uh, it's been an amazing ride so far. So uh, I threw out a question for you guys. I uh, asked you to comment below that episode and told you that I would pick a random winner next time I recorded. Well, guess what? I'm recording. So <laughs> I'm going to announce that winner. So there were four comments on the episode. I went to random.org, said pick a random number between one and four. And the number was one. So the very first post, I'm going to pull up on the screen here. The very first post, so I can see it, you can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the very first post was from uh, the Reluctant Sisters. Uh, and they, maybe she, probably only one person, signed Adrienne. Uh, hey, congratulations on 200 subscribers. I love your state park stories. Thank you. <laughs> my favorite thing to do with my family which consists of myself, my husband, and our Great Dane, a Great Dane, wow, uh, is to go to parks and go for hikes and walks. My sister is moving back to Washington in April, so I'll have to keep all these parks in mind for when I go visit her. Oh, yay! So, uh, Adrienne, if I'm pronouncing your name correctly, uh, please get in touch with me for your prize. So on the last episode, the prompt was to tell me your favorite thing to do with your family. Favorite thing to do is to go on hikes, which is awesome. So you win this skein of yarn and this bag. Uh, and there is no closure on this yet because I'm leaving it up to you whether you would like snaps or a zipper. So uh, if you say snaps, I will put two snaps on here. Uh, and if you ask for a zipper, I will sew on a zipper that goes across the entire top. So this is one of my bags, uh, D Hard House Creations. There we go. <laughs> uh, with teacups and birds, and it's very colorful. And then I picked this skein of yarn out of my stash because it goes very nicely with the bag. So congratulations, you are the winner. So in order to get in touch with me to get your prize, um, what I would like you to do is either, uh, if you are on Ravelry, which I know not everyone is, but if you're on Ravelry, just send me a private message. My username is ladyknits2. If you're not on Ravelry, you can also send me an email. My email is dhart. Allie at gmail.com. So my last name, first three letters of my first name at gmail.com. And I'll have that all that on the screen here for you. So Adrienne, get in touch with me. Let me know that you're the winner of the giveaway and your preference on a closure and your mailing address so that I can ship this out to you. So congratulations. Yay. Awesome. So before sitting down to record this episode, I did go back and watch my 2018 year in review episode from last year and I also started that episode with a giveaway so I think this is a tradition. I am going to do some kind of knit along or prompt at the end of the year so that I can start off the new year with a giveaway. I think that's a really nice tradition to have so uh, thank you so much for those of you who participated, and I, I look forward to more giveaways as we move along. <laughs> so, that all being said, uh, so, this year in review, so the calendar year of 2019, 
I do use Ravelry um, and Ravelry has been a really great uh, resource for me to catalog my projects and gain access to patterns and just being able to store all of that information in one place and like I said I know not everyone utilizes Ravelry but I happen to really love all of the features so I have been using it pretty hardcore so I went through my uh, notebook is what it's called where you log your projects and what I've been doing is Every time I finish a project, I put tags on it. And if it's a knit item, I label it as knit. If it's a crochet item, I label it as crochet. And um, I like to put the year that I finished it. So everything I finished in 2019, as I cataloged it, I just put in a tag of 2019. Um, and then separate out socks and sweaters and things like that. So I went through and uh, calculated all these things. So first off, let me just say, um, when I went through my folder in my notebook, labeled 2019, the yardage total at the bottom did not match the sum of the yardages of all the total product projects in that folder. And I don't know what is preventing that from adding those up correctly, but I manually added all the yardages up to get my more accurate total, which I'm going to share with you here. So this past year, the calendar year of 2019, I knit a total of 15,418 yards. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's of everything. I had fingering weight projects. I had DK weight projects, worsted weight. I think that's it. Um, so that's just pure yardages of yarn. So if I compare that to the previous year, uh, in 2018, I knit 14,970 yards which means I increased the amount of yardage by 448 yards. Cool, super awesome. So I knit more than the previous year, which I was not expecting because 2019 has been really eventful. Uh, I started a new job. I moved across the country. Uh, spent lots of time packing for that move. And I, I, heck, I'm still unpacking from that move. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been eventful. <laughs> 2018, the previous year was also eventful. I got married. Uh, and that's a big one. That's pretty much, is that my highlight of 2018? Yeah. So got married two years ago, <laughs> moved across the country this past year. Wow. Okay, and then if I compare the number of projects, so the number of individual projects that I made, uh, this past year in 2019, I completed 40 projects. The previous year in 2018, I completed 31 projects. So I increased the number of projects by nine. So that should tell you, <laughs> I knit more small things, <laughs> which is fine, totally fine. So uh, let me break it down for you guys. Uh, the big things that I knit are socks, sweaters, shawls, and hats. I knit a few other things too, but those are the big categories. So this past year in 2019, I knit 14 pairs of socks that I completed. I have some still in progress, but completed pairs of socks, 14. Sweaters, four sweaters. <laughs> four, which is awesome, four sweaters. In fact, I knit three of those for myself and one for my husband. Shawls, I knit six shawls, completed, completed six shawls. Hats, 11, 11 hats, yeah. The previous year in 2018, I knit 13 pairs of socks. So pre pretty close, oh, about the same. I knit four sweaters, so exactly the same number, four sweaters and four sweaters. Shawls, six. 
exactly the same. And then hats in 2018, only one. Yeah, so here's where the big difference came in. Uh, this past year was in my hats. So that's really cool. Uh, if we talk about oddball knitting in 2018, uh, oddball, oddball knitting uh, is a maybe not the nicest way to say this. Um, extra things that I wouldn't normally knit all the time, like socks and sweaters, things that I just don't gravitate toward, I suppose is a better way to say it. So <laughs> things like um, pillow covers or stuffies, uh, things like that. So <laughs> this past year in 2019, I actually crocheted uh, quite a few stuffies. And I didn't really count any of those yardages in this total because I didn't think to weigh the yarn beforehand and after making the stuffies, you have all that stuffing inside of it, whatever. Anyway, that isn't included in this total at all, but um, I took a picture here of the stuffies that I crocheted this year and I'll have that up on the screen. So I made uh, some bears and some foxes and the intent was to sell these at a craft show. That craft show was super unsuccessful. There were so few people who showed up to that craft show. It was a complete waste of time, which is really sad. I did get to spend that time with my sister, which was nice. However, she was really sick the whole time. So we both had to drive quite a ways to get there and I mean, she could have just stayed home and got better. But anyway, they're mine now. They're my stuffies now. <laughs> and they're really cute. And I would actually like to make more. Uh, so in 2018, I didn't make anything like that. So I did do something different. Uh, this past year in 2019, I finished zero blankets. Zero. And in 2018, I finished one baby blanket. But see, I've had two big blankets on the needles for like three years now. But I'm not finishing them, which is a real big bummer. So, yeah. Let me just say, in the last episode, in my 2018 year in review episode, I set some goals for myself, which is pretty typical, right? And uh, as you can expect, my goals involve things like make more sweaters, which I did make more sweater. I didn't set a numerical goal to like make more than I did this past year, but I made more sweater. I made four more sweaters. So goal accomplished. <laughs> the next goal was to finish one of those blankets. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Oh, well. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to talk about running later in the episode. I did have a running goal as well. But so this this year moving forward with my crafting, yeah, I would really like to finish one of those two blankets that I have on the needles. They are both mitered square blankets. I'll put pictures up here on the screen. Um, there's a colorful mitered square blanket where I'm using... Uh, all of my acrylic worsted weight yarn from big box stores. Uh, and I'm trying to do this in a somewhat random way uh, where none of the colors repeat in any row or any column. And I'm, I'm trying to do that. And and uh, anyway, it's, it's probably like halfway done, maybe almost halfway done. Uh, yeah. And then I have a second mitered square blanket, which I'm not doing with random colors. I'm using white gray and a dark gray, and I'm creating like this plaid pattern. Uh, and yeah, I'm nearing the finish line on that thing. So if I was going to finish a blanket this year, it would be that one. So I would like to finish one, if not both of these blankets this year. That would be stellar and it would count for so many yards of yarn for the year. So yes, I uh, unfortunately did not meet that goal this past year. So you know what? Let's try again. Let's let's try again. I would love to finish one of those blankets. Um, another knitting goal I am setting for myself for 20, 
20 is to knit a colorwork sweater. They are so beautiful. They are so beautiful. There have been so many designs put out of colorwork sweaters. It's hard to know where to start, but they're they're just beautiful. So I have um, yarn that I have purchased for that endeavor. It's it's in my stash. It's waiting. I just need to pick a pattern and go. So yeah, I would love to knit a colorwork sweater. I think that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, another goal I have is to put out um, more of my designs, D Hard House designs. Um, I'm working on some colorwork socks that I am enjoying knitting and uh, yeah, so I would like to do more of that. I'd love to do it more regularly. It's very difficult <laughs> when um, I do work a full-time job. I teach for a living at uh, the college level and um, I now have a really long commute and I did not have a commute before so that adds an extra challenge but um, I would like to really make a serious effort to put out my design patterns more regularly than I do right now <laughs> yeah uh, so that's that's it for the knitting stuff I don't really want to set too many restrictive goals uh, I want to keep some flexibility there so that when uh, I'm feeling really creative, I can just follow that line of creativity and not feel like I'm letting myself down. So yeah, I want to keep things really general. So running, running happened. Running happened in 2019. I'm so proud of myself. So in this past calendar year, you guys, I ran, I ran 189.42 miles, which is really awesome. Considering the previous year in 2018, I ran 65.7 miles. Yeah. <laughs> That's almost three times as much, almost almost three times as much. That's really cool. So um, yeah, that's an increase of 123.72 miles. Ah! <laughs> that was great. So I had set a goal for myself with my running. I said I would love to run at least one event, 5k or higher. And I'd really love to do a 10k. And guess what? I did. I completed the Texas Warrior Mud Out, which was a 5K mud run event. And I did that with some of my friends in Texas. Hey, Lacey. <laughs> um, yeah, that was super fun. I was terrified to do that event because I'm scared of heights. Um, and I climbed over things that I, I didn't know I could climb over. It was really cool. It was really cool. Um, anyway, so that was a 5k event. Not that we ran it for a time, not that we even ran all that much. Um, it was just a really neat experience. So I did complete that event, my first ever mud obstacle course run event. So that was really neat. Uh, and then later in September, after we finished our move here to Washington, uh, I ran a 10K and it was a virtual run. So it wasn't um, an event where I ran with a bunch of people. What I did is I signed up online and I timed myself and I uh, submitted my time and paid an, paid an entry fee. And uh, I signed up for just getting the medal, but it was the Smoky Bear um, run to support... Um, the Smoky Bear and that whole cause of preventing wildfires. Uh, and so that was really cool. So I ran my own 10K. So I ticked both of those boxes and I'm just so proud of myself. So this year, this year, I would like to run a half marathon. Yeah. So I'd like to increase my mileage. Um, 
like I said, I ran a little under 200 miles for the whole year. So I'd like to increase my mileage. I think it'd be really cool to do over 200 miles for the whole year. Uh, and I'd love to run a half marathon. And I have my sights set on a couple of them. Um, there's one that's about three hours away from where I live. So I would need to drive there the day before and get a hotel room. There's another one that's only like 30 minutes away from where I live. So uh, what I'm going to do is research what um, what my money would be going towards. So I like to support um, causes that I believe in. So giving back to the community, uh, whether that's about um, health and wellness or supporting um, parks and recreation, um, cancer research, you know, lot, there are lots of things that I am totally great with supporting. Um, so I would like my money to go towards that uh, instead of supporting a business. So uh, some running events are a business and that can be really fun, but I would like to support a good cause with my money. So I need to do some research to figure out which one of those two I'm going to sign up for, but I'm going to sign up so that I'm committed and I can set a running schedule to train for that. So that is one of my goals moving forward. <laughs> I'm really excited. So yeah, that's, um, that's it for the year in review. I can't believe that I actually knit more. I thought it was going to be less because that move was really time consuming, really time consuming. And the fact that I injured my finger in the last two weeks of the year and there were projects that I totally intended on finishing and I didn't. Yeah. So yeah, I, I was surprised, so surprised in a good way. <laughs> oh, another goal. I should really be keeping track of my spinning. Okay, so this next year I need to keep track of my spinning because I've actually been spinning. And if you've been watching the last few episodes, uh, you know that I'm spinning some, some raw wool that I purchased. I've been washing it, uh, prepping it, spinning it. And so that's another goal that I have is to finish spinning that whole fleece and then to knit a sweater out of it. So <laughs> there we go. That's a particular project I have in mind and I'd love to finish it in 2020. I think that'd be uh, spot on, really awesome. So yeah, that's... Um, I think that's it for this episode. I am going to record episode 71, which is the next one to come out uh, really soon. I'm also thinking about doing some more live um, episodes, and I'm not sure whether I want to do that on YouTube or Instagram. Um, Instagram seems a little bit easier just because... <laughs> I can do it from my phone, and it's so much easier to bring my phone around than my entire laptop with the microphone. Um, but if you have any opinions about that, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to get back into weekly podcasting. Uh, Mike has picked up an adjunct teaching position, and so there's a few evenings each week that he'll be out teaching so I could have the house to myself and <laughs> record episodes uh, and perhaps some live ones. I think that'd be really fun. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments below, and I hope you guys have a fabulous 2020. It's so exciting. Uh, it's a new year. It's a new decade. It's bright and shiny and new. And <laughs> all the excitement is there. So um, I hope that you had a wonderful 2019. And I hope you have an even better 2020. So until next time, happy crafting and I will see you soon. Bye.